Hello everyone and welcome back again to Thursdev. I'm your host Luke and today we'll be continuing our series on the week by week, step by step guide of how to make your game, whether it's your first or 51st. Last week we looked into defining the game's six W's. What, who, when, where, how, and why. Which should have given us a more clear idea of what our game should be. Now, I'd like to focus on the pitch. When we've defined our game to ourselves, the next step is to define the game on paper in a way that not only us, but others can also see and understand. If you're not familiar with the pitch, it's a document that outlines the basics of your game in such a manner that anyone can look at it and get a general idea of what the game you're describing is and the answer to the questions we looked at last week. There isn't any one be-all and end-all pitch template that everyone in the industry uses. It tends towards the significantly more free form, but I'm going to show you my pitch creation process and outline the absolute essentials in creating a good pitch document for distribution both internally and to potential investors in your project. Note that the pitch document is, first and foremost, a document for executives and project greenlight decision makers to look at, which they'll then use to decide whether to further action a project or not. This means that you have to strike a balance between non-ambiguous explanation of a project's details and brevity and simplicity, so that you can expect the person looking at your document will make it to the end. And make no mistake, most pitches aren't read cover to cover. You'll be lucky if this document is skimmed, but that doesn't diminish its necessity or its usefulness. Your pitch document should be about 9 pages ideally, and each page has a very specific function. I'm going to go over each page, but the general points are as follows. The title or cover page, then the executive summary, pillars, pillar explanations, justification, team assets, business model, and project specs. I'm going to gloss over the title page, and that doesn't count towards your 9, as it should be fairly self-explanatory and isn't all that important. Really just select or create some beautiful key art that explains what the game you're creating will be, have a game logo, something to catch the eye, even a working title. Easy peasy. Where we really get started is the executive summary. The executive summary is the highest of the high level descriptions of the project, designed to be read by, as the name implies, executives, as well as marketers, salespeople, and otherwise. This should be a fine distillation of your project's goals and should explain exactly what the game experience you plan to offer is going to be. We want to avoid ambiguity here as much as possible. If the reader doesn't see the game that you see when they read this, without you present to explain, the summary has failed. Use genre business words, use examples of other games, and touch on major differentiating features that will pique the interest of the person reading. If I were to summarize an iconic game, Portal would be, think with portals to solve environmental puzzles. A first person puzzle game where the player progresses through a mysterious science lab, solving environmental puzzles by creating portals with a portal gun between points in space, while being taunted by the lab's psychotic AI. This description is brief and simple, but hits all the notes necessary to describe the gameplay experience of playing Portal and catch the attention of the reader. If you can describe your game reliably with an X meets Y, then don't be afraid to do it. I know that many creatives out there want to believe that their idea is original and special and difficult to define, but unless you can, don't expect others to understand it. Next, the pillars. I created a video that goes into extensive detail on the concept of play pillars, so I'll just link that in the card right up here and summarize by saying that pillars are the main central concepts or mechanics of your game that define and inform your game's design direction. Everything in the game supports these pillars, and the pillars together create your game experience. The pillars will be further explored in following pages, but on the pillar summary page, you would simply mention the pillar with a short supporting statement. Continuing with Portal as an example, Portal-based puzzle solving. Use portals to traverse complicated environments in order to progress the game. Lesson-based level design. Every level teaches the player a new technique of using their portals, then uses those lessons in later levels. And solving a mystery. The player only interacts with a demented AI and has no idea about where they are or why. Some may disagree with my choice of pillars for Portal, as there are obviously many nuances, but for our purposes, these three will suffice. 
The pillar description is an individual page that explores in more depth the individual pillar, explaining its meaning and how it interacts with the game and the player's experiences of playing the game. It might include an example of how that pillar is presented in the game as well. If you had the pleasure of hearing about Portal back when the orange box was new, they had a lovely series of promotional videos that explained how the player would use portals to solve puzzles in Portal. Think of the page as explaining that in text. Use diagrams and illustrations as necessary as well, but of course, keep brevity in mind. Less text means more chance someone will read the whole thing. You typically create a page for each of the pillars that you defined in the pillar summary page. I usually try to hit three. More and the game document becomes needlessly convoluted, and less leads to undue shallowness. Again, there are designers who will disagree with this point, but three has been the sweet spot in my personal experience. Your justification page is an extension of the why and the who that we talked about last game. What does this game bring to the table? Who are the demographics of your game? Do market research about similar games to get an idea of what your existing install base are for in similar games and explain how you can leverage your marketing strengths, if you have any, to grab this install base for yourself. You want to show people that there will be interest in this project and that it'll appeal to an existing group of players. You can certainly attempt on the blank slate, but if you don't know who's going to be playing your game, then it's going to be significantly harder to market to them when the time comes. Being able to justify why the project's being made will help you and others involved with the project to know what needs the most effort in your game's development process. The next page is your team assets. This one is an easy but extremely valuable page in the event that you're attempting to sell your project to a potential investor. You want to summarize your team's experience and technical background here. If you've got previous projects that you can draw from that will shorten development time through reuse of assets, put it here. If you have experience in a specific engine that you'll use for this project, this is also the place. The assets page will detail all of the background that you and your team have that will contribute to finishing the project. This is also the place to showcase the members of your team, as even though veteran developers can still fail to finish their projects, showing a team of dedicated professionals that have shipped finished games is going to hold weight when looking for someone to believe that you can finish your game and that it will be held to a certain standard of quality. The business model page is mostly for projects that have one, by which I mean this is not exactly needed for a free game with no plan to sell. If that's your goal, go ahead and skip this page. Otherwise, what sort of business model do you plan on employing? Is the game premium? Free to play? Do you plan on adding DLC in the form of unlockables or expansion packs? Cosmetics? If you have a special premium currency, how is it used in the game? Are you adding ads to your game? Note that this should also include value add items like free content updates, user generated content, mod support, anything that might contribute to the longevity and lifetime value of your project. Though it was a premium title without any specific expansion packs, Portal 2 included the Perpetual Testing Initiative, which was a system of long-term player retention through allowing players to create and share levels that other players could enjoy. That would go here. And finally, we have the specs page. This is a simple formatted datasheet that tells the reader the important information about the project genre, what platforms you plan on releasing on, business model, number of players, estimated development time, number of staff working on the project, and any other pertinent simple stats that will be useful for evaluating a project from a pure numbers perspective at a glance. By following the above, you should be able to put together a reasonably passable pitch document. Granted, the pitch document's primary purpose is to sell an idea to possible investors, but keep in mind that the pitch process happens not only in business-to-business -business sales, but also internally in some studios, when deciding as a studio what to work on, and just as much to give the whole team a high-level point of reference before the overview page of your GDD to look to when thinking about the project and how to accomplish its goals. Next week, I'm going to talk about the other major document that you'd likely want to prepare before entering into your production phase. Just as valuable as the pitch document in selling a project, if perhaps not even more so, and also a tool for project management, we'll be looking at the staffing plan and the project schedule. 
This one will harken back to the Man Month, which I already spoke about last year and is attached to a card above, so though not required viewing, it might be worth a quick refresher course if you aren't already 100% sure what a Man Month is or how it works, especially in the context of a video game studio. So stay tuned next week as we look at the schedule or staffing plan in video game production. Thank you as always for watching this episode of ThursDev. I hope that you found it interesting and entertaining, or at least one of those two. I also hope that you'll consider joining us again next week or checking out the archives of our other videos. If you'd like to join our little collective of gamers who love both playing and making games, feel free to subscribe and YouTube at least might show you our new content as it comes out. We really don't know. YouTube is a mystery. Otherwise, thank you as always for joining us today, and I hope that I will see you next time. Take care.